righty. Make sure, okay, so can, hopefully you can all see my screen here. I've got the PowerPoint open and I'm still getting used to juggling my uh, screen around and watching the chat. Um, so be sure that you, if you're asking questions in Discord, do it in the in-class questions channel. Oh, sorry, that was my phone. And if you're asking, um, yeah, if you're asking questions in Discord, do it in the in-class questions channel because I can only, my brain can only monitor one channel at a time. And let me turn my phone on silent so that doesn't happen again. Okie doke. Well, so I'm just gonna do a quick review of what we went over last time. I hope everyone has been doing well since then. Let's see. Okay, so we started some Python Monday, and um, so I wanted to get into that a bit more. So we talked about um, how we want to always start our Python documents with the main function, and you can do this by typing def main, open parenthesis, close parenthesis, and then this colon here. This is just saying, hey, I'm starting my main function. This is going to be what my Python file will do, and you're going to put more code after that. You always want it to be indented, usually with the tab. Um, this is just very important for Python in general. It uses a lot of um, indentation to tell different things about the code and what functions you're in. We'll talk more about that later, but all you need to know right now is just after you type def name, then indent it. Um, and then at the very end, you want to type main without the indentation. Um, and yes, okay, so for the question, um, how do you contact me if I'm in a breakout room? There is an ask for help button and I do see that. Um, you can also put it in the chat. Last time it was a bit, uh, I was helping a lot of different people, so that's why I didn't see uh, some of the requests in time. But, um, oh yeah, no, I mean, uh, oh yeah, the ask for help is not available in the main room. It's only when you're in the breakout room. Um, so you probably just put it in the um, Discord chat, which I think you're on Discord. If you're not on Discord, um, I think you can put it in a Zoom chat still, if you're in the main room or in a breakout room, we can experiment, we can experiment with that and then see what goes the best. So um, if you have suggestions for doing the breakout rooms better then um, do let me know because I want you have a, to have a good experience. If you chat in the Discord, yeah, others can help too. So we do have a couple, um, a couple of helpers in the class. Um, okay, so um, are there any other questions about breakout rooms or getting my attention or anything um, before I get back to Python? All right, I don't see. I think you can also raise your hand, maybe? Um, I'm not sure. We can try a bunch of different ways and you can tell me which one's easiest. Hello, Cameron. Um, okay, so We've just been talking about a review from last time. So uh, we went over starting your Python script def main, putting your code in indentation, and then breaking out of that indentation and just typing main. This is actually what tells Python when you click run, it tells it what to run. Right here, you're just defining, hey, if I told you to do something, this is what I would tell you to do. And then in this main function right here, where you actually call it, you're actually telling it to do that. And uh, so, all right, just checking the chat. Yep, yep, I got my ears. Sometimes they flop over. I need to make new ones. Okay, okay, we also talked about variables. These allow you to store values that you can use later in your program. Um, so we have a couple basic types that we went over. We went over int, which is an integer. We went over float, which is a floating point number, just means a decimal. Went over string, which is anything in quotes. It's typically what you think of as like a sentence or some letters. Make sure it's in quotes, though. It has to be in quotes for Python to know it's a string. And we also went over Booleans, which I know some of you are a fan of. And that's true or false with a capital at the beginning of the letter. And so these types are important, as we said last time, because it allows you to do some different operations. All right, are there any questions about variables or maybe some clarifications you need? I do see a question here. You don't need GitHub today. We'll, we'll probably start it um, next week. Yes, Jacob. Yeah, so when I try to just put in a string in um, rep replit, like mm -hmm. using a def main, it's always, for no matter what I try, there seems to be, it says uh, syntax error or invalid syntax with that format. And I'm not sure what I'm doing wrong. 
Okay, um, let's just, here, I will escape out of this and let's just try it. So um, I haven't opened a replate yet because I realize I haven't really shown that much in detail on how to um, open up your own. I'm just gonna start a new one by clicking Python. It'll load this thing. It will come up with some random title. Um, yeah. I'm just going to put example uh, create. Okay, so let me work on creating this. Um, so when you're typing the string, do you have the open and the close quotes? Yeah. Okay. And then I'm going to here. All right. So are you just saying, like putting a string in there like that, or are you assigning it to a variable? I, I, never mind. I fixed it. I okay. was doing the syntax wrong. I just didn't fully see that. My apologies. That is okay. That's what, that's what learning is all about. Um, there's a lot of little mistakes that you could make while programming. So, um, I don't mind at all. All right. So, but anyway, here's an example. We have our main function here. We called it at the bottom. Here's a string. I'm going to assign that. Let's just call the variable a because I'm feeling lazy right now. Um, don't feel like making an actual name, but you say a equals hello. And maybe, uh, if we want an int, we could say b equals 10. And so that's just some variable assignment. And we have this equal sign that's called the assignment operator. It just means we're assigning that variable. Um, yep, and we've got the slides and the link. Thank you so much. Okay, so let's get back to these slides. Are there any other questions about variables? I will get going. All right. What's the point for, for the method defining? What was the point of the parentheses and the colon? Oh, that is just something that Python needs. So it's not really like um, a reason where I can say this is definitely the reason why. That's just you have to do that for Python. So when you define something, you need these parentheses and then the colon. The colon is like, it's kind of like if you're making a list yourself, like when, um, like if I were to type something out and I were to say, here is what I want to do, colon. And then I have a list one, two, three of what I want to do. It's kind of the same thing where this colon says, all right, I'm about to tell you what the function is. Um, the parentheses are because um, you can eventually put stuff inside here. Um, you typically don't do that in the main function. You can do that in other functions, but we're not going to do that in this class. Um, but the parentheses are just there in case you want to put something inside, but you do have to have them even if it's empty. So does that help you understand a bit better? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> That's a good question. Some of these, these things... Um, you just have to accept as like, oh, you just have to do that because that's Python says so. Um, and they're just good to remember, but um, definitely always call them out if you see something and you're like, I don't get why that happens. Um, let me know because I've just gotten so used to it that sometimes I'm like, oh, it's just because Python says do this. Okay, so we've got variables and so I'm just getting the Zoom chat. Man, juggling Zoom windows is hard, guys. I have never had a better appreciation for teachers teaching on Zoom. All right, I see some chats. Okay, should we be creating a new file with folder? Um, it doesn't really matter. Whatever you want to do, um, that is completely up to you. Okay, so we've got variables. And then, like I said, if you want to assign a value to that variable, you can just have your variable name. We want the variable names to mostly be all letters. You can have underscores. Um, you could have uh, numbers after letters, but it can't start with a number um, because that just makes Python a little confused but I can have my value equals three, that would be an int. And then on this one, I have an example of actually in replit and it's uh, my name equals Miranda. And this is a string and you can tell because it's in quotes. No spaces either, right? Um, so if you mean uh, spaces between, oh, in the, in the variable name. That's right. Yeah, because a Python sees a space and think that it's a new command that you're giving it. So if you type a space, if I had a space between my and value, it would not understand what that meant because it's thinking it needs to know what my means and knows what value. It would just explode. Um, not really. It wouldn't explode. That would be bad. But um, yeah, no spaces. Good. Good point. Um, okay, so the repeating function is not really, it's not like it it's a function for repeating. It just means if you call main again, um, and I'll show you when I go back to replit, um, but just in answer to C's question, if you call your main function again, it'll do it again. So when we put main at the bottom, 
that is calling the main function, if you put main and then a new line and then put main again, it'll just do it twice. Okay, so one thing that I didn't really talk about, but you probably saw me do on Monday is called a comment. This is text that doesn't run as code, and it's really useful if you just want to write notes to yourself. So it's a good way to write explanations of your code, too. If you're showing your code to someone else, you could have little comments like, this piece of code does this, or this function does this. Um, and so to make a comment, you just start a line with this symbol. Some people call this a hashtag. Some people call this a sharp symbol, if you're into music. Um, some people call it pound. I think mostly I hear people say hashtag, um, but you can also just say like comment symbol or whatever, hash. Anyway, you get the point. Anything after this little hash on the same line will be a comment. So I have my def main function, and then I'm calling main down here. And inside I have hashtag, this is a comment in Python. The computer's not going to do anything with it. It literally just ignores it. Um, it's just for you as you're coding to write notes to yourself, basically. So um, you can even do it on the same line. So if I have, um, if I call main right here and then I put a comment, um, it's the same thing. Once you put this little symbol here, everything after it will be ignored unless you start a new line. So I'm going to show that to you here. So erase this. And say here's my comment and you can see it's some some editors will even make it a different color so that you know it's not going to run um say my variable equals 5.0 and you can say something like represents and so you can even comment on the same line and um, anything that you type after here um, is still a comment. These are just nice um, for you to explain your code to yourself. So there's short explanation of comments. Um, let me know if that if you have questions about that, but these are just useful. Okay, so now we're going to talk about the print function, which you also saw on Monday, um, but I'm just going to explain it more in detail here. So print is just for printing text to the terminal or the console. To use it, you just type print, and then this is another example where you see open parentheses, close parentheses. Um, and the point of that is that you type stuff in between those two parentheses so it knows what to print. So print is kind of like a, com is, um, like a command, it's a function, and um, you tell it inside the parentheses what you want it to print. And you need to make sure that you have this in quotes so that it knows you're not typing out a variable or you're not typing out code or anything, you're actually typing a string that you want it to print. So you can type um, anything. So I've had your text here. If you want to type a number, you would still use quotes, but you can type your number. Just make sure it's in quotes. Um, yeah, so the slide deck should, uh, someone just put it in the chat here, and then it's also on the Discord on in-class questions. Also make sure that if you're asking me questions on the Discord, that it's in the in-class questions channel. Um, okay, and so back to print. So you put your uh, print statement here inside parentheses and inside quotes, you put your text and you can even print variables. So when we were defining variables earlier, um, you put that without quotes so that Python knows it's a variable and you're not put printing, like literally you're not printing my variable, you're printing whatever is assigned to this variable here. And then you can even print more than one string by adding commas in between. So um, I have a little example here. Let's say um, I have a variable pet, which equals cat, this is a string. And if I want to print it, I say print, parentheses, quote, my favorite pet is a, end quote, and you add this comma here and type pet. And this will print, my favorite pet is a cat. You'll notice this comma just automatically adds a space, which is really nice if you want to print out a sentence using one of your variables. So I'm going to show you an example of that here. So I'm going to say my name equals Miranda. I'm going to take out these comments so that it's easier for you to see. So my name is Miranda and I'm going to say print. Hello. And so now I'm not going to add anything to it right now because I want you to see it. So I'm going to click run after I say print hello. Okay. Um, Sorry, I'm just reading the chat. Um, yeah, thank you for putting the print thing in there. So you say print hello, and you can see over the console tab here, it says hello. Now, if I wanna say hello, Miranda, I'm gonna use the comma 
and then type the name of the variable. So hello, comma, my name. And now I'm gonna click run and it says, hello, Miranda. Cool, or creepy, but cool. So um, you can make your computer say hello to you. You could also add another line. So if you want, um, every time you start a print statement, it's going to add a new line. So just like these print statements are on new lines, um, when you start a new print statement, it will be on a new line. So I'll show you this. So hello, Miranda, hello again, starts on a new line. So you can have as many, um, you can have as many print statements as you want and they will all just be on new lines. So you can have a lot of fun with that. All right. So are there any questions on print so far? Yeah. Yes. I'm, uh, I'm trying to, so I created a new uh, file mm -hmm. uh, to uh, try everything we're learning today. And what's coming out is um, whatever I'm running. What, Basically, whatever uh, the holdover is from the main.py file is what's printing in my new file. Um, oh, that's because when you click run, it's going to run main.py. Is that what you're saying? You have a different file? Yes. So when, um, so if you want to do a new file, I would just do um, like a new replit for um, now, um, because the replit is just going to automatically run main.py. Got it. Okay, mm -hmm. thank you. Yeah. Okay, print. So I am in your walls. So that's creepy. Okay. Um, Would there be any way to, like, be able to print the what's it called? Like, what I'm doing is what if I wanted to do hello, hello blank, and then an explanation point at the end? When I try oh, yeah. it, what's it called? Um, I'm not sure what you mean by what's it called. When I uh, try it, it puts a space. Oh, okay, yes. Um, it will put a space if you have the thing here. You can, oh. I think you can do this. This is advanced, don't worry about it if you don't understand. But if you wanna get rid of the space, you can do that. Um, but then you would have to add a space here. This sep just means separation. Let's see if that, if that works. Yeah. Um, so that, that's how to answer that question. Don't worry about that. If you didn't ask that question and you don't get it, that's just the answer. Um, okay. Yep, learn print. Okay, yes, yeah, sure. I see your hands been up. Okay, so. To concatenate the strings, instead of using a comma, you could just, are you able to also use a plus sign? I mean. Yeah, so I was avoiding saying that because I didn't um, want to get into that. But since we're all asking, you can do plus signs. So um, you can say hello plus my name. I'm gonna add a space so that there's a space between it. And then um, plus exclamation point. So yes, you can use this plus sign. Um, and that works too. I just don't want to confuse anyone. So there we go. Okay, you learned it with plus. Okay, cool. Well, good to know. So yeah, you can do a plus sign if you prefer that to commas. Just remember to add this space. See, I'm going to get rid of this space here. And um, if I don't, if I don't have the space, it's going to say hello, Miranda. And uh, we don't want that. We want hello, Miranda. Or even if you like to be grammatically correct, you can add a comma and say hello, comma, Miranda. All right. Cool, so we've got print down. Love the print function. Print function is great. All right. So next, I wanted to talk about the input function. This will let your programs be even cooler. This lets you take input from a user. So it looks like the print function where you type um, the name of the function, which is input, and then parentheses. And then, um, Again, in quotation marks, you're going to put what you want your message to be. And this is going to be displayed to the user, which is the user is whoever clicks run on your program. If you send your program to someone and they run it, it's going to be them. If you run it yourself, you are the user. But you're going to put your text in quotation marks, and that's going to be displayed to the user. And the user is going to be able to type. We'll actually let them type, and you can type something and then press enter. 
And then this variable becomes whatever that user entered. So just to summarize, when this runs, the console, it says terminal there, I mean console will print the string inside the input function and allow the user to enter an answer. So it'll say, enter your name. It's gonna wait for the user to do that before running any code after it. So if you have another print function at the bottom, it's not going to print anything until the user answers this question. And then when the user enters their name and then presses enter, it's going to assign the variable my name um, to whatever the user entered. So let's practice that. So if I say, Um, so let's say animal equals quote, what is your favorite animal? Now, oh, sorry, whoops. What did I forget? Does anyone know if I want it? Yeah, input. <laughs> input, what is your favorite animal? And now I want to say print your, or say your favorite animal is animal. All right, so now let's see what this does. Is the space between the plus symbol um, or comma and the other words necessary. So if you use a plus symbol, the space is necessary because the plus is just gonna literally add whatever it is. Um, if you use the comma, it will automatically add the space for you. Um, so here, I'll show the difference between that. So I'll show that here so you can just see the difference. Our inputs cap specific. Yes, everything will be um, specific to capitalization. So you typically want everything to be lowercase, just so you don't forget. So I'm going to click run here. We have, what is your favorite animal? So that's pretty cool. So if you notice, we talk about spaces. I didn't put any space here. So when it asked me for my answer, I'm going to say cats because I love cats. Um, there's no space between the question mark and cats. So if you want there to be a space, then you'll have to put a space there. So I'm going to say cats. I'm going to press enter. And now it says, my favorite animal is cats. So that's pretty neat. Input is really useful if you want to get um, something from your user and make it specific to them. And so these two examples look the same, but I did make them differently. So I have your, so in this one, I have the string and then the plus and then the variable. You can see I had to add the space myself. And in this one, I had the string, the comma, and then this, and I didn't have to add the space. Okay, the print. Oh, you think uh, they mean the print line. I think Andrew, I'm use the, sorry, I'm reading from the chat. Is the space between the plus symbol or comma and the other versus? Oh, so you mean like this space? That is not necessary. You don't have to do that, um, but it's recommended for readability. Okay, sorry for misunderstanding your question. Yeah, this would run just fine, um, but it's not as nice to read. It's a little confusing. So I do the space. I'm having a problem. What is your I'm problem? I'm typing the same code in, but I'm saying that the, but even though I typed animal in, and it's saying it's assigned but never used, even though I spelled it the same. Um, it's saying it's assigned but never used. Did you put it in the print function? Yes. Um, then I, I don't know. What exactly did you type? I tried typed animal equal. I typed the same thing you did, but oh. But it didn't work for some reason. Um, okay. Do you want to show here? I think I, I let people share this time. So you want to show really quickly what you're talking about? All right. I just want to make sure it's not. Um, It's not a problem that other people are having too. Right here. here. 
I typed the same thing, but it's not working for some reason. Okay, let me see. So you have, you know, like, what's input? What is your favorite animal? Your favorite animal? Wait. I need yeah, it. was there an in, was there an indent? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, always pay attention to the indents. Yep. Okay. All right. I can stop sharing this. Yeah, you're good. Cool. Yeah, so that was actually a really good uh, thing to see is that um, if you accidentally have the indents a bit off, Python will not like that. It will say, no, thank you. Okay, does this also mean that Python always prints a space with commas in print statements? I'm trying to understand this question. Does this also mean that Python always prints a space with commas in print statements? So like with this, I'm like, will it always print a space if I have it there? It should. Um, let me know if I didn't understand your question, but maybe you're saying like, um, let's say, uh, I have another variable called animal2, and I say that equals dog. And if I say, print animal2, animal it will put a space. Is that what you were saying? Like, is there a way to tell Python to not put a space, but still include a comma? Oh, yes. So I did show that earlier. It's not, um, it's not super important. Um, if you don't get it right away, but um, you can say uh, this argument here, sep equals, and then quote, quote which is just the empty string, which means no space. And then that will not put a space with a comma. That's just something to just file away in your head and not really, you don't have to think about that yet if that confuses you. Um, Okie doke. Okay. Um, Okay, I do see that someone is having trouble signing into the Zoom. Um, if I have one of my TAs on, can you tell them to um, like have their parents make the account if they are too young to have an account on Zoom? I think that's probably, okay, they got it. Okay, cool. Sorry, I'm just seeing that um, with the notifications. Okay. All right, let's, let's not print threatening things. Um, oh, for the recording, it's not a real threat. That was a fake. It was, it was a joke in the chat. Sorry. For the, for the YouTube people. Oh, you're good. Okay. Um, any questions? We've got the input function. We've got the print function. So we already kind of talked about this. You guys really jumped ahead of the game. What happens if you don't or do add white space to the input function um, or to the print function? So if I say, what is your favorite animal space? then it's going to um, add a space there. What's your favorite animal? So now there's a space and it reads a bit better, cat. Your animal is cat. Okay, so I wanted to spend the rest of the time for class on um, working on writing your own input function and kind of customizing it. So um, we'll just see how this goes and we do have some extra stuff if we want to get into more later. Um, but so what I want you to do is we're going to practice printing input from the users. So you're going to write a program with the main function that asks the user for their name and then says hello with their name. You could even make it a different message if you want. Um, if you're going to share it, make sure it is an appropriate message for the class. But um, yeah, write a function that asks the user for their name and then says hello name or some other message name. All right. And if you want, if you have the slides, um, then if you want more of a challenge, just look at this slide where it just tells you what to do. If you want a little more hints, then I have this slide here that gives you um, kind of some steps that you can think about while you're making your function um, to give you a little bit more guidance on it. So I'll put in breakout rooms now, you should be able to share your screens now. Um, so sorry about that last time. You should be able to share your screens. I'm going to stop the recording.
So here, I'm going to stop it um, just so that you're not being recorded while you're in your Zoom rooms, or even if that does it, I don't even know. All right, so stop it.